Hello friends, welcome to Manu Law Classes. Today in this video, we are going to discuss the important news from the Hindu edition of 3rd April 2023. So, now let's start the news uh, from the editorial page. Now, before going to the editorial page, uh, let's uh, have a news from the state. That is, Alavikulam National Park in Kerala, which is the natural habitat of Nilgiri Thar in Munnar, has a, a new attraction that is a, a furnarium set up inside the park. So, according to the official, this is the first time that a fern collection is being set up in the hill station. So, here uh, some important news will be found in the Elvakulam National Park. Where is it? So, it is in Kerala. It is a natural habitat of Nilgiri Thar in Mundal. So, if you see the Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve, the characteristic species is Nilgiri Thar. Okay? Uh, here, the first time, Fernarium has been set up. Now, the ferns are ferns. Okay? So they are part of the epiphytic family. They grow naturally in a soil-less condition and they obtain water and nutrient through leaching from the trees. Okay. Now let's start with the editorials. The first important editorial is about the Indo-Pacific region, which says no sayonara for Japan in the Indo-Pacific geopolitics. Okay. So here, if you know that uh, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida, he was recently in visit to India in March 2023 and uh, he, where he unveiled his plan which is called as Japan's new plan for free and open Indo-Pacific. Okay. And the second thing which he talked about was Japan-India special strategic and global partnership. Now, here the whole article hai, it mainly uh, discusses about the challenges in the Indo-Pacific region and what the role this new plan for free and Indo-Pacific can have in that challenging environment in the Indo-Pacific region. Now, if you will see the background under which these things have been proposed, FOIP concept have been proposed is the Russia-Ukraine war, then Chinese assertiveness in the South China Sea, East China Sea, then the Indian line of actual control and Taiwan Straits. Okay. So, this is a new plan, hai, new plan for the FOIP that is free and open Indo-Pacific. It lays stress on the need to uphold the rule-based order and respect each other's territorial sovereignty. Okay. Now, here you will see that the new uh, Indo-Pacific challenge chal hai abhi, that is a uh, Ukraine war, food security, cyberspace, then freedom of seas and connectivity among other issues. Okay. Now, here you will see challenge hai isme japan jo hai wo ek naya concept ke sath aata hai foip which is like giving a more a boost to japanese uh, initiative in the indo pacific region so you can see that uh, yahan pe ye hai ki that there is a firm belief that foip it will be able to work with and embrace diverse voices and create an atmosphere of cooperation and collaboration rather than division and confrontation then it also focuses on atmosphere of cooperation that is rule making through dialogue. Let's discuss about the four pillars of FOIP. So the four pillars of FOIP are that is peace and rules for prosperity. The second is addressing challenges in an Indo-Pacific way. Third is multi-layered connectivity. And the fourth is extending effort for security and safe use of sea to the air. Our first pillar ki baat kare, that is in the first pillar. So it has been pointed out that vulnerable countries usually suffer the most if there is an erosion in the rule of law. Therefore, Japan wants to engage in economic development program such as quality infrastructure investment which is based on G20 principles. This is the first pillar. Hai. Second pillar, ki hum baat kare, to second pillar pe kya hai? addressing challenges in an Indo-Pacific way. So here there is expansion of cooperation for the free and open Indo-Pacific by incorporating realistic and practical projects in a wide range of areas such as climate change, food security, global health and cyber security. So this case Japan, hai, it is already working bilaterally with many countries in the Indo-Pacific region. The third is multi-layered connectivity. So the three areas identified for introducing uh, multi-layered connectivity projects are Southeast Asia, South Asia and South Pacific or Pacific Island countries. Yahan pe Japan jo hai, wo connectivity projects ke liye kaam karega. So Japan has made a new commitment of this is very now important dollar hundred million towards Japan Asian Integration Fund. The next, which is very relevant to India, that it is it is going to promote Bay of Bengal Northeast India Industrial Value Chain concept in coordination with India and Bangladesh. 
Then for Pacific Islands, it has new Palau International Airport Terminal Project supported by Japan. Now coming to the fourth pillar that is safe use of sea and air. So here we are talking about the openness in the Indo-Pacific region, transparency in the freedom of navigation in the Indo-Pacific region. So over here we will see that Japan is going to strengthen the maritime capabilities of maritime law enforcement agencies in other countries. So Japan will implement the strategic use of official development assistance, revise the development cooperation charter and set forth guidelines for ODA for the next 10 years and then introduce an offer type cooperation and a new framework for private capital mobilization type grant aid. Then the next is that the Prime Minister of Japan has also announced that Japan would mobilize a total of more than $75 billion in public and private funds in the Indo-Pacific region by 2030 in infrastructure development. Okay, so this article is very important. Just like you have called it, then you have focused on it. Now, after that, the FOIP, which is a new concept in Japan, so this article throws a good light on all those pillars of FOIP. Then, what was the primary purpose of visit to India? So, Mr. Kishida's visit was to reinforce the centrality of Japan in the emerging geopolitics of the Indo-Pacific. Now, see, he has said a very important statement. That is, Ukraine today must, may be East Asia tomorrow. This shows Japan's concern about growing Chinese uh, intervention in the region. Now, coming to the foreign trade policy, long on intent. So, now India has come up with this new foreign trade policy. Now, here is the important uh, points. I will one, two, three, 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 three. So, foreign trade policy has been unveiled by which ministry? That is, Union Minister of Commerce, Industry and Textile. Who is Union Minister of Commerce, Industry and Textile? Piyush Goyal. What is the target that by 2030 India will have total exports which includes goods and services of dollar to trillion. Currently what was India's export in the last fiscal so it is dollar 760 billion okay. So if you will see that uh, this dollar 760 billion we have achieved 75 percent expansion in uh, export since last seven years okay. The next is the national trade facilitation action plan. It aims to achieve that are essential and laudable but in no way novel. So for example, miss kuch naya baat nahi karta but that is very important. Like improvement in the ease of doing business through reduction in transaction cost and time, reduction in cargo release time and paperless regulatory environment. Uske baad, then there will be shift from incentive to an enabling regime of duty remission and exemption schemes to facilitate duty free imports of inputs required for boosting export. Okay, this means that incentive ke bajaye, now there will be duty exemptions or remission to those products, okay, imports of those products which are required for manufacturing export oriented products. So some of these schemes are rod tape, uska full form deke kya hai? remission of duties and taxes on exported products. Then Ross CTL that is rebate on state and central taxes and levies, then advance authorization, then export promotion capital goods. The next is a one time amnesty has also been offered, giving exporters more time to avail advance authorization and EPCG schemes. Then the policy has given an uh, has devoted a new chapter that is for promoting cross border trade in digital economy, which is very important which includes moves to facilitate the establishment of dedicated e-commerce export hubs okay that is very important now coming to the next topic same sex marriage is a matter for parliament okay so currently if you will see that there are 34 countries in the world which have legalized the same sex marriage Netherlands being the first one now if you will see one important case uh, we may be asked a question that in which case homosexuality was decriminalized so it was uh, now Tate Singh Johar versus Union of India. Now there is one more case that is Supreo versus Union of India. So in this case Supreme Court has referred the uh, matter related to legislation of same sex marriages to a constitution bench. So now Tate Singh Johar versus Union of India it decriminalized uh, homosexuality which was there in section 377 of IPC. उसके बाद अगर हम देखें कि यहाँ पे जब ऐसे केसेस आते हैं तो सेम सेक्स मैरिज का तो देर तो यहाँ पे सोसाइटी का राइट और इंडिविजुअल राइट दोनों सामने खड़े हो जाते हैं। For example, if you will see Nautet Singh Johar case और Joseph Shine cases in which adultery was decriminalized, so 
यहाँ पे हमेशा क्या हुआ है कि दैट इज द राइट ऑफ सोसाइटी टू कंजर्व ट्रेडिशन विद ऑल देयर इन्फॉर्मिटीज एंड द राइट ऑफ एन इंडिविजुअल टू एंजॉय हिज कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल फ्रीडम्स विद ऑल इट्स इडियो सिंक्रेसिस ओके सो यहाँ पे देखें कि दैट टू सुप्रीम कोर्ट इन सच केसेस हैव फेस्ड क्वेश्चंस ऑफ सेक्शुअलिटी ऑटोनोमी सोशल इक्वेलिटी सोशल लेजिस्लेशन ओके द क्वेश्चन ऑफ सेम सेक्स मैरिज टू इन द सेम रेंज अब हम अगर सेंटर के आर्गुमेंट की बात करें ठीक है ना तो यहाँ पे हम सेंटर की अगर स्टैंड की बात करें तो ओके सो इट्स इट इज लाइक दैट द फर्स्ट विच इज विच इज इम्पॉर्टेंट फ्रॉम द सेंटर पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू इज दैट society marriage okay it is a building block of society so according to the central government's notification that same sex marriage has the potential to alter how we conceive a family which is the building block of any society so yahan par aap dekhenge that uh, most of the conventional definitions of marriage adhere to center's conceptualization of institution and generally identify marriage as a socially accepted union of individuals for procreation theek okay? hai Fine. So these are authors' view. The second, the current legislative framework promotes the conventional understanding of marriage. So यहाँ पे है कि that marriages in India uh, they are administered through a complex legal structure. For example, we have Hindu Marriage Act 1955, Parsi Marriage and Divorce Act 1936, Christian Marriage and Divorce Act 1957, Muslim Personal Laws. Then we have Special Marriage Act. Except Special Marriage Act, most of these uh, acts they recognize marriage between man and woman. But now Parliament has enacted Special Marriage Act to facilitate inter-religious marriages. So here, page the authors are saying that the legislative intent behind the use of gender-neutral language in Section Four cannot be presumed that it favors same-sex marriage. मतलब so, जो Section Four है SMA का वो डेट इस gender-neutral, but that does not mean the parliamentary intent was to favor same sex marriage then coming to nautesh singh johar case so the author says that in nautesh singh johar case uh, the supreme court recognizes consummation for purposes other than procreation okay uh, fine religious and social morality still conceptualize intercourse as a procreative activity the next is the indictment against uh, donald trump so we have done this so he has become the first president in U- us who has been indicted Now, so he was inducted by a New York grand jury in Harsh Mani case. Fine. So, यहाँ पे the issue is that uh, reports that uh, Mr. Trump's attorney uh, he passed off dollar one lakh thirty thousand payment to Miss Daniels as a business expense, which potentially violates the campaign finance laws. ठीक है? So, these transactions took place between two thousand eleven two thousand sixteen, and uh, it was said that mr cohen who was the attorney of donald trump he worked out a deal where he paid miss daniel's dollar 1 lakh 30000 for her silence and she was subsequently reimbursed dollar 4 lakh 20000 and it was written in book as legal expenses theek okay, hai so this is the matter related to consensual sex and payment for being silent uh, okay and the expenses were shown as legal expenses now कमिंग टू द चार्ज तो यहाँ पे क्या हो सकता है कि मिस्टर ट्रम्प ही कुड बी चार्ज विद फॉल्स बुक कीपिंग एंट्री एंड देन चार्ज विद फॉल्सिफिकेशन ऑफ रिकॉर्ड सो इवन इफ हैपन्स दैट देन इट विल बी कॉल्ड एज मिस डेमिनर अंडर द न्यू यॉर्क स्टेट लॉ एंड नॉट अ फेलनी तो जो मिस डेमिनर का जो सेंटेंस है इज फार लाइटर सेंटेंस इफ दूज इज कन्विक्टेड द नेक्स्ट इज एलविन ब्लैक हुई मैनहटन डिस्ट्रिक्ट अटॉर्नी ओके नो ही हैव टू प्रूव दैट the business record in questions were falsified to cover an entirely different and serious crime okay so ye ek bahut bada challenge hai to prosecute mr trump for felony so he he can not currently in new york state law he cannot be charged under felony like this but the, the attorney general has to show that it was entirely done to cover up a crime the next is what are the other options that prosecutors for could follow तो यहाँ पे है कि दैट एज्यूमिंग दैट जस्टिस डिपार्टमेंट वुड टेक इट्स क्यूज फ्रॉम द डेमोक्रेट कंट्रोल व्हाइट हाउस एंड सीनेट एंड इफ लेटर कीन टू अटैक मिस्टर टर्म पॉलिटिकली बिफोर ही स्टैंड फॉर इलेक्शन इट इज नॉट द हर्श मनी केस दैट अपीयर्स टू बी द ऑब्वियस लाइन ऑफ इंक्वायरी ओके सो यहाँ पे क्या है कि जो ट्रम्प के अगेंस्ट जो चार्जेस हैं फार मोर सीरियस इशूज आर दैट अबाउट हिज रोल इन इनसाइटिंग द कैपिटल हिल राइट्स ओके दैट इज जनवरी सिक्स टू one then the financial dealings of trump organization and mr trump's act of withholding classified information after demitting 
of this. The next is all eyes on border talk between Bhutan, China as king begins India visit. So, Bhutan's fifth king, Jigme Khesan Namgyal Wangchuk, he is going to arrive in Delhi on Monday afternoon at the invitation of President Ramati Murmo. Okay, so this news, it is the follow-up of what Bhutan's Prime Minister Lothe Shering has spoken uh, earlier while he was in visit to Europe that Bhutan and China, they are hoping to complete the boundary demarcation talks on disputed Asia in next one or two more meetings. Okay, so here you will see, so Bhutan and China are approximately about more than 400 km of boundary they share and the area which is contested between the two countries is about 760 kilo square kilometers of area which also includes Doklam. So here the issue is that why India is worried because see Doklam jo hai, Doklam plateau is uh, related to 2017 mein, uh, jo hai, wo problem ho chuki hai. there was a standoff between India and China and Doklam it is at the tri-junction of three countries that is Bhutan, India and China okay? now China uh, is interested in Doklam because it will give it access to Chumba Valley where it can build its railway where it is near to Sikkim so that is again a problem for India. Second is that China, India is worried that if there is a swap of territories between Bhutan and uh, India between a, a three-step formula or three-step plan which has not been made public by Bhutan or China. So suppose if Doklam goes to China, so, do, so China will be very close to Sikkim. Fine. Now the next is reusable launch vehicle landing test successful. So Indian space research organizations, they have carried out the landing experiment of reusable launch vehicle technology demonstration at aeronautical test range in Chellakkeri, Chitradur. So here what happened is the Indian Air Force ka jo helicopter, hai, Chinook helicopter, it dropped the RLV TD from an altitude of 4.5 km and ISRO executed the landing experiment of RLV TD as planned. So here you can see that ISRO has said that for the first time uh, in the world, a winged body has been carried to an altitude of 4.5 km by a helicopter and released for carrying out autonomous landing on a runway. So the Indian Air Force has said that its trial team which participated in the mission, it was headed by women officer from the Bangalore based aircraft system and testing establishment. Now what is this RLV TD? So see RLV TD, it is similar to the aircraft and it combines the complexity of both land vehicles and aircraft landing vehicles and aircraft this is the whole conception tha. it started 20 years ago and had taken many years to grow from the initial stage to this stage the next is vice admiral sanjay jajji singh is now vice chief of navy so this is one liner news for you so vice admiral sanjay jajji singh has assumed charge as assumed charge as the vice chief of naval staff Okay, so he is going to succeed uh, Vice Admiral S.N. Gormade who uh, superannuated on March 31st. So, uh, uh, Vice Admiral uh, Jasjit Singh, he was commissioned in Indian Navy in 1986 in the executive branch and he has served as the Deputy Chief of Integrated Defense Staff. Now, who is the Admiral or Chief of Indian Naval Staff? So, the answer is R. Hari Kumar. The next is uh, again from the foreign trade policy that is government to expand definition of political risk under export guarantee scheme. So political risk matlab ki jaise ki exporters hai, they are exporting their products to some other country. Now if there is some political turmoil in that country so their consignments are stuck up and they do not get their money back. So in such cases export credit guarantee corporation of India it indemnifies exporters for losses when buyers turn insolvent or there is default on payment and including political risk. But the export credit guarantee corporation, it does not indemnify the exporter uh, for anti-dumping steps or non-tariff barriers. So now what government is doing, uh, okay, so government is going to expand definition of political risk under export guarantee scheme which will now also include fresh imposition of non-tariff barriers by importing nation after the shipment has left Indian shores. This means that the consignment of steel is going from the USA. The consignment of steel is going from India. But before the USA has increased the tariff on the USA. So that will be covered under political risk. 
and then exporter will be indemnified by export credit guarantee corporation the second is that uh, government is going to establish a uh, interministerial committee to examine micro small and medium enterprises trade related grievances which have policy ramifications the next is india wants to become a dollar 1 trillion tourism economy by 2047 says kishan reddy so he was speaking at g20 tourism working group meeting in suliguri west bengal ye news bhi important hai इसको नोट डाउन कर लीजिए कि जी ट्वेंटी टूरिज्म वर्किंग ग्रुप मीटिंग कहाँ पे था सो इट वाज इन सिलीगुरी वेस्ट बंगाल सो हियर इंडिया एम्स टू बिकम डॉलर वन ट्रिलियन टूरिज्म इकोनॉमी विद हंड्रेड मिलियन इंटरनेशनल विजिटर्स बाय 2047 ओके सो दिस ईयर दैट इज 2023 सो टूरिज्म मिनिस्ट्री इज ऑब्जर्विंग इट एज विजन इंडिया टू अ प्रोग्राम विच इन्वाइट द एंटायर वर्ल्ड टू एक्सप्लोर इंडिया then the union minister has said that the uh, first g20 twg meeting hosted in the run of kutch gujarat which okay that more than 200 buddhist monasteries 40 unesco list world heritage sites and other important sites in states okay have been highlighted then there will be certain trails which will be launched for example there will be himalaya trails and ganga trails this year okay and then it will be followed by narmada trail from amarkantak from where the narmada rises in madhya pradesh to arabian sea then kaveri river trail then west coast trail from kutch ran of kutch to kanyakumari and east coast trail from west bengal to kanyakumari the next is uh, saudi arabia other oil giants announces cuts in production so saudi arabia and other opec plus oil producers they have announced further cuts in their production amounting to around Uh, 1.16 million barrels per day okay to improve to support market stability theek hai to yahan pe agar aap dekhenge to once again there will be cut in oil production by opec and opec plus members including saudi arabia so definitely it will lead to increasing crude oil prices to so, yahan pe agar aap russia ka dekhoge so it is going to cut it by 5 lakh bpd until the end of 2023 theek hai then UAE it will cut it by one lakh forty four thousand, which is the biggest. Then Kuwait one lakh twenty eight thousand, Iraq two lakh eleven thousand, and Oman forty thousand. Algeria said it would cut its output by forty eight thousand. Then coming to sports, so Debonair Durrani, also known as Salim Durrani, he was a cricketer. He passed away at the age of eighty eight. So if you will see that. Uh, important points about him so he is india's first arjuna award winner in cricket that is the first important thing second he has also he has made his test debut against australia in 1960 at brebon stadium in mumbai and he played his last match against england in february 1973 at the same venue then he has also Dabbled in Bollywood, where he uh, was appeared opposite renowned actor Praveen Babu in movie Charitra. Means he has acted in movie Charitra, which was released in 1973. Then he has played some important match. For example, uh, the 1961-62 five-match Test series where India defeated England by 2-0. And then he also played an important match against West Indies. Okay, where he played a key role uh, in defeating the West Indies in Port of Spain. The next is Australian Grand Prix. So, back Max Verstappen from Red Bull has won the Australian Grand Prix, followed by Lewis Hamilton, and the third was uh, Aston Martin's Fernando Alonso. So, if you will see over here that uh, this was his first win in Melbourne. Verstappen and Red Bulls first in Australia since Sebastian Vettel's 2011 play. So friends, that's all for today. We will meet tomorrow again with the Delhi Hindu news analysis. Till then, have a nice time. Take care. Thank you.